Right, them little strips of uh, card, which uh, 0311 Uli, or Uli told me to put on. I've ran the glue down, put them on, and a combination of my, the back of my tweezers, sorry, my tweezers, and the back of the edge of the knife, just dabbed it down and pushed it up to cover that gap up both sides of the forward boat deck it's looking really nice I and mean, you can see a line there a little bit of a line but what I'm going to do is I'm going to top this up with some white paint and hopefully that line won't be it will still be there it just won't look as prominent with like a little black edge on the rear boat deck again it's not gone down too bad but because of the deck the top deck issues that one's slightly raised and the actual superstructure top side wall itself but like all he said it will let it will make it look a bit sharper and it has done to be honest i'm well chuffed i listened to his advice so like i said i've just got to top these up with some white paint but not looking too bad Right, I'm having a bit of a problem with the forecastle deck. I'm putting the um, rails in now, which are the two D20s and the D21 in the middle. But it's the D20s that I'm having a bit of an issue with. Because when I glued the forecastle deck in, the, the forecastle pot section, the rails are actually higher than the tops of these rails that are glued into the top rim of the hull. But luckily, this section of the forecastle, even though I've glued it down, it's still a bit loose around the edges because the glue hasn't fully glued it into place. So I've managed to, on the that um, cargo bay hatch there in the middle of these um, triangular shaped where it meets in the middle, I've got my clamp down and I've pushed it down a bit more and now these tops of the rails there are now meeting the tops of the hull rails. So that's one good thing. Also, when I was pushing that down, just about here, the glue snapped. So what I've done is as I'm pushing that down, I'm now pushing these back into place. And those rails, the hull rails and the actual rails on the folks are now gluing together. But I've also got another issue with this plate here, which I'll explain because the clamps are in the road at the moment. Right, I'm now working on the tops of the smokestacks. Um, what you could say they're chimney tops as it were. The three parts I'm just doing with these two parts at the moment, you got the actual outer of the smokestack pot top and you get like this thing that's got like a little rimmed edge so it forms like a cap and it pushes into place and that's what you get these are upside down and them caps that rim that L shaped rim that sits into there perfect and that's where the glue is so then them will be the same like that you get all three and the one on smokestack number one the trouble is, on the smokestack itself, you've got another one of those L-shaped rims. And those L-shaped rims are supposed to pop in there like that. The trouble is, it won't go fully in. It won't click into place because of the paint that's on the inner rim. So what I've had to do... Because I've tried sanding all that out of the rim. I've just cut the I've just cut this I've just cut the uh, the actual L shaped rim off, and then all I do is just rest it on top of there like that. It just won't go in at all. So if you're going to try and do the rim to get it to lock into place, just don't paint that area where the rim is, because you'll have the same problem as I've got. Taking the clamps away now, the top rail that I've put in is now level with the hull rail. I'm just hoping that this forecastle stays put 
and the glue doesn't snap and that pops up that I took the clamps away from there as well and I'm hoping the glue there doesn't snap and that comes out and that comes out so at the moment that's okay well I'm now going to address what I said before because the clamps are in the way is this plate here now the plans call for you to put it in just turning the plans round it's number E6 and that, accompanies, that encompasses a set of stairs so you, you push that into place the only problem being because of the because I've just found out and more and more and more alignment issues this is too tall because I reckon this deck should probably be down another two mil because that should be level with the top of that I was thinking about cutting the two mil off there but one there been no barrier and two the, the staircase would be higher than this wall the top of this wall and if I cut away again because there's no barrier that deck is perfect with that there so what I'm gonna what I've had to do is I've just had to lop off the corners because there's nothing I can do about that and that's where that's that, that's the only thing I can do with it bloody alignment issues right the alignment issues don't stop there this back wall here on the stern that should be two mil backwards that should be behind the hull railing and also going to the back of the stern here i haven't put this railing in yet i think that's a d22 there's a 1.5 two mil gap there so i'm gonna to have to fill that because when I test fitted all this, it's perfect. I don't know why these issues have reared that ugly head. Because I'm thinking what I could have done, this is going to be something for you to consider when, if you ever do one of these. These four tabs, like I said, they're fitting them channels perfect. What it might be worth you doing, possibly, if you have the same alignment issues as I have, maybe lock two mil or one and a half, two mil off the back of each tab. So that would push back and eliminate that gap the only problem is now in my look if i'd have done that i'd have had even more alignment issues on the bloody foxel because the only reason these alignment issues have reared the ugly head and they think well wayne you could have tested it better i did test it i did test fit it but the only way the only reason i've picked up on this is because of these railings that i've had to put in I mean, with the techniques that I've picked up over the years since 2012 when I did the Revel one, the reason I built another one is because I wanted to make it better. And it's going to be better. It's just not going to be, you know, there's, some of you out there is going, well, this is not accurate. It's not going to be accurate. I just wanted to prove to myself that I could do it again and make it better. So there's going to be a lot of tweaks I've got to do to fix these issues. Oh, it's fighting me back. This is one Titanic is proving to be one tough opponent. It's not going to win, but I'm getting very frustrated now. I really am. Right. I'm now going to fix this issue at the back here with them, that wall and that wall. Now for this side of the wall, which is the right side, I'm going to I've cut out a little piece of plastic and I'm going to put in that there. So what I've done on the D sprue, I've cut a bit of this off because it's the same thickness and it's lovely and flat. So I've filed off, filed and sanded down the academy lettering and got this square. And then what I've done is I've measured that and it's 2 mil. I think it's either, yeah, I think it's 1.5 to 2 mil. And I've cut off this, what I did on the square I rounded off the edge like I've done there to cover that. And then once I've got it right on the square, I then cut it off with my cutters and sanded it down. And I'm now going to glue that on to there. I'm just hoping it's going to fix that. 
Right, I've done the little fix to cover up the alignment tissue of that back wall. Um, I just ran some glue. Then the top edge, when it goes down, the curved edge there, and then just a tiny bit of glue on the top rim of the hull. Getting my tweezers with the bit of plastic and just nudged it into place, making sure the alignment was really nice. And that's dried an absolute treat. I'm just going to turn it round so I can show you the one I put on that side. By right, turning the Titanic round on the left side, again just on the square, just rounded it off, make sure it fitted, and then cut it off the square, glued it, ran the glue round there like on the other side, and then my tweezers just pushed that into place. And it's dried lovely. I've, I've still got to paint this edge there, but that's covered that up an absolute treat. I'm really well chuffed on how these little pieces of plastic have done their job. Right, I've now painted the uh, top edges of those bits of card I used to cover the gap. And they've actually blended in quite well. I mean, it ain't 100%. But they're looking better than there was. It's not as prominent as it once was.